Hi everyone, welcome to Africa Agenda. Today we are sitting here with Denver-based artist Dennis Goff, and he is going to be talking with us about his paintings um, that he recently is working on. So, um, Dennis, I'll go ahead and let you introduce yourself. My name is Dennis Goff, and I was a uh, professional artist for the, over 30 years. Um, I'm now retired, and um, I'm doing oil paintings depicting the people of the African continent. But unlike most depictions that you see in the media and other res uh, outlets, um, I want it to be positive. Positive in the sense of having an empathy toward the African that we all identify with. And I'm gonna get into that as I show you the individual paintings and what I'm trying to achieve. Thank you. So can you tell us a little bit about how you got started with creating your art, the artwork that you do? Well, I've always uh, been involved with Africa, even as a child. Um, there, back in the 1950s, most people wouldn't remember, but uh, it was, there was a program called Lowell Thomas, uh, and uh, he would travel around the world, different cultures and one of them of course would be constantly going back to Africa and whenever the program would come on my if I was out in the backyard playing uh, my mother would shout Dennis Africa is on and then I would come running in and we sit together and watch it uh, and as a matter of fact mind you this is the 1950s uh, most people would ask where would you like to go Which, and they'd say France or England or whatever uh, in Europe or maybe South America but my mother uh, would, uh, she would surprise people. It's like, well, where's the place you'd like to go? She'd always say Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, she didn't pinpoint any particular country, but she always had an interest in Africa and in the African people. And through my observances of the films, um, also my involvement in the African American community, um, as you develop, mind you, beginning in the 1950s, we all know what that era was like. Uh, that you learn along the way the um, the thread of humanity that's in all of us and that's again what I'm trying to achieve in my work so can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration that you had with your current project that you just completed well the inspiration uh, the visuals I haven't been to Africa it is my goal one day to get there uh, and I hope to achieve that. As a matter of fact, um, it'll be a tribute personally to my mother because she was never lived long enough to take that trip. She died at 51. By the way, her name was Virginia Olivia. I want everyone to know that because if it wasn't for her, I don't know why I'd be doing this today. Uh, so now getting back to your uh, question, uh, what I do in my exploration of Africa is uh, I uh, look through various resources, uh, various tribes in Africa, um, and a particular tribe has my interest, and then I will uh, uh, look at all the artifacts, um, the peoples of that particular tribe, including the landscaping. I don't want to put a mountain in a painting if there's no mountain in that part of Africa, so I have to, I'm trying to be as careful as I can about that. Uh, and then once I've viewed all the images, I just close it all down and then I do the painting in here. Mm. I just sit back and that's where the composition takes place. I take bits and pieces mm -hmm. of everything I saw uh, to do the composition and then the theme, the mood of that painting is uh, what, I, what I reflect on. Um, and as a matter of fact, I can point to one painting right now uh, to give you an example. Is it possible you could point the camera over here? Or I can get the painting and bring it over. Let me bring it over. I can do that. Just to give an example of what I'm saying right now. I can do it. Yeah, here we go. Uh, this particular painting I refer to as Devotion. Uh, it's a Botswana woman. She's on the way to fish. And a mother's love, her love, pauses her to reflect upon her shoulder slung child. Now, why did I do this composition related to this particular tribe of people in Botswana? Well, I was in the supermarket one day 
and um, I saw this lady that had her child in a market basket and she had, had a paused look on her face but it was one of tranquility peace uh, and inner bonding with her child sitting in that market basket well I felt what the same way about this lady most women in this country the United States they don't fix their hair like that they don't dress like her they don't weigh waist deep in water to forage for anything uh, let alone the overall landscaping uh, but I hope that all women I'm not referring to African women African American women all women uh, have had this moment mm -hmm. they've all had this moment and that's what I mean when I say empathy mm -hmm. and that's what I hope to achieve in my work mm -hmm. Hey, I'm back. <laughs> so what what different types of mediums do you use to create your artwork? Well, I'm uh, currently I'm engaged only in using oils. And the reason for that is because, again, as I mentioned, working commercially for uh, over 30 years, um, I never used oils. And the reason simply is because of the deadlines that you have, that you have to meet in advertising. Mm -hmm. It's usually designer's gouache or acrylics or ink or something like that. Something that dries quickly. As right. a matter of fact, when people would ask me back in those days, well, uh, why can't we have a Michelangelo today? <laughs> and my response was always to say, well, I can't find anybody that will give me a two, three year deadline to complete the work. Mm -hmm. So, but, but because oils are more protracted that way, there's ways of expediting the drying process. Yeah. I don't bother with that. Um, and plus, it's something, the point is, it's something that I haven't done since I was a child, really, mm -hmm. has been working in oils. Yeah. And so I thought there'd be new challenges in working with a different medium than what I was accustomed to working professionally. So how long does it take to complete one of your paintings? Well, you know, I always get asked that question. Yeah. And it's it's the toughest thing for any artist or I should say at least one of the toughest and that is to put a period on the end of a sentence mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know to to say it is finished uh, and so everyone varies some are much quicker than others um, but I will say this, the process is drawn out because as I mentioned, I, I view the tribes, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, people involved in the tribes rather, all the landscaping and then I compose it here. And then once I've composed it here and how I want to do it, as I pointed out as an example, the woman from Botswana with her infant, um, then I s sketch it out. I start out with sketching uh, and it's like just charcoal. And then when I'm satisfied with that, mm -hmm. then I transfer that over to a canvas or, uh, or uh, a board, mm -hmm. usually like a masonite board. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that transfer, then I block in the color and this, that, whatever, and then you build to when you put a period in the end of the sentence, i.e. it's finished. <laughs> <laughs> so so, it's, so it, it's a rather extensive process. Um, I would say really the most grueling part really is just in the research mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because uh, the tribes are so diversified uh, the beauty uh, of the people the artifacts and it, re it truly is an artist because of how the people of Africa has be have been portrayed how on earth do you make that connection how do you bridge that gap which I personally feel is long overdue yeah. I'm not saying it hasn't been done mm -hmm. I've seen some artists work that's lovely mm -hmm. but it's not done enough mm -hmm. and I don't know why mm -hmm. if you uh, I was very fortunate to go to the Louvre in Paris mm -hmm. looking at the old masters not that it has to be something that lofty there's a Getty Museum in uh, California and many others and uh, you know uh, the public overall has gone too mm -hmm. and you've seen the paintings that were done hundreds of years ago mm -hmm. and you've seen people with wearing the wigs mm -hmm. and the elaborate gowns and so on and so forth uh, but yet I don't think there's anyone that's ever seen these paintings that hasn't identified in some way. I don't look like that. Some people movies look like that, mm -hmm. but I don't dress anything like that. But what's the theme? What's the expression? What are they doing? You know, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, whether you're, you, you're a person of religion or not, mm -hmm. uh, I would recommend anyone to read that book because the theme throughout 
is that there's nothing new under the sun. And there is nothing new under the sun. Uh, yes, we act different, perhaps uh, dress differently, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But again, the human condition, mm -hmm. the loves, the hates, uh, desire to embrace, desire from uh, refraining from embracing, uh, and you could go on and on. This is all the same. Yeah. When you look at the, even the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, mm -hmm. you're seeing people that don't look like you. Mm -hmm. um, if you're someone of color, mm -hmm. you might identify more. Mm -hmm. But still, you're not wearing a loincloth or your hair cut like that and so on and so forth. But yet, you don't feel a total estrangement yeah. from the people. Mm -hmm. And so, again, that's that, that's that's the cause. That's the theme. That's what I'm trying to achieve. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully, I can leave that uh, that I can leave that behind. Not only for this generation, but future generations, mm -hmm. and understand the human connection we all have, mm -hmm. and always mm -hmm. in a positive spirit of love. Yeah. And there's not enough of that mm -hmm. in the media. Mm -hmm. Not enough of it. Yeah. I know about the terrible things. We all know about the terrible things. And there's a time and a place to display all that. I'm not saying we shouldn't, mm -hmm. but let's not just look at that. We're talking about, uh, you know, if anyone was to say to me, uh, and maybe people have thought this, mm -hmm. that it's a Pollyanna type of thing. In mm -hmm. other words, I am presenting the people of Africa in this really divine state, mm -hmm. you know, this divine condition. But when you consider what's going on there, it's not reality. Mm -hmm. Well, number one, I question that because we all have our moments. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but even aside from that, I'll take that challenge. The challenge being for consideration that, to give an example, anyone who's disfigured, let's say, in a fire, is a terrible thing. Terrible thing. Heart breaks. But if you know the person was extremely beautiful or handsome. Doesn't that kind of bring it home even deeper? What we respond by saying things like, oh my gosh, and she was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a shame. Well, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. if people can see the African mm -hmm. and identify with the feelings, the person, mm -hmm. the love, the courage that's there, well, maybe that will even deepen mm -hmm how horrible what's going on. It shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't be like this. Yeah. It should be that Botswana woman with her child. But I'm talking about the moment, not the way she lives. Mm -hmm. That might be dated in terms of the future. You know, you, you won't have this anymore. Pristine Africa in this context. But it, but but the human emotion, that stays. Mm -hmm. Like I say, it's out in the supermarket, right, right. here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. Okay, not Botswana. It's not limited to that. <laughs> so, um, so I, I hope that answers your question. It does. Oh, yes. And then, so you spoke about future generations. How important do you think it is for young African Americans who are living in the states or maybe even abroad to see these images and see positive representation of African images? Well, I'm not about to. Uh, dictate anything to the African-American or the African for that matter. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, um, the first, when I first started my paintings, uh, if I, uh, the first word of approval that I had to have to go any further mm -hmm. was the African, of course. <laughs> because if the African looked at my work and said, well, no, 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 that doesn't even, mean. well, you know, I, I wouldn't be where I am now. Yeah. I had to have the approval mm -hmm. of the African. Yeah. And, uh, and then as far as the African American is concerned, uh -huh. uh, the African American will do what the Amer African American does mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, in terms of how effective it could be mm -hmm. as they work to improve mm -hmm. things for the, the African-American community mm -hmm. exactly through the community mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I I would say this that I would I would hope that no one has the idea of well yeah but this guy is this guy's a white guy mm -hmm. doing Africans mm -hmm. I'd rather have uh, a black guy doing Africans. What's a white guy doing Africans? Mm -hmm. Well, um, again, uh, when you see the beautiful paintings of Indians, mm -hmm. when you see the beautiful uh, paintings, uh, like I mentioned, the Smithsonian or uh, whatever have you, the Louvre, yeah. um, you um, 
Well, do you honestly believe that when you see depictions of uh, Europeans, mm -hmm. that it was only Europeans that necessarily painted them, mm -hmm. or lived in that circumstance? Yeah. You have people in fields uh, foraging wheat and all that. Mm -hmm. but the people that painted them never stood in the field and did that. Mm -hmm. And you know what? There's a whole lot of uh, black artists that wouldn't like you saying that mm -hmm. or thinking that. Mm -hmm because a lot of black artists do beautiful work depicting people other than someone who is black. Let's not get narrow. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. We're all God's creation for yeah. crying out loud. And I'm not saying that as a hyperbole. Gee, that sounds nice. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. we are. Mm -hmm. And if you want to put it in a real literal sense, uh, the mere fact, I, I would say without getting too rhetorical about it or too deep in thought about it. Uh -huh. Just simply saying, the mere fact we can exchange blood with each other is, I think, puts it in the duh category. <laughs> right? I think so. All right. <laughs> so you talked about getting approval from the Africans. How did you go about doing that? Well, I was uh, searching the internet mm -hmm. to see what organizations there were, etc. Mm -hmm. And I ran across one that intrigued me very much uh, called Africa Agenda. Mm -hmm. And I had a discussion with a gentleman named George Bamu. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. Uh, from Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And we had a wonderful exchange. I told him about my experiences and so on and so forth. What I was trying to achieve. And uh, my gosh, we were on the same page right away. Yeah. Because uh, George has been very, very involved and currently still is mm -hmm. in Africa with the Africa Agenda. Yeah. Um, to uh, promote a positive image of the people of the African continent. Mm -hmm. So it was a perfect marriage. That's exactly what I'm doing, mm -hmm. you know, what, what my purpose is. So, uh, and it's been through George, who's, mm -hmm. who's not only a very good friend, yeah. but he's also been a mentor, basically. He's uh, been kind of a guy mm -hmm. uh, to help me through, to have even more of an understanding mm -hmm. of the people of Africa, to meet the people of Africa personally, mm -hmm. uh, friends of his, organ other organizations, etc. Mm -hmm. He's been terrific at resourcing for me. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I'll be forever thankful to George for that. So George, if you're listening, thank you. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about what African countries you'd like to visit? Oh, wow. <laughs> is that a long list? Well, I'll tell you, the, well, the first one that comes to my mind, of course, uh, I would say is Kenya. I, I, I said, of course, Kenya. I don't know why I said, of course, but uh, I, I guess it's, I, I'm saying that because I've always thought that way, and I'm expecting you to, to know that. Uh, <laughs> so, which you could possibly know that. Uh, but yeah, I would say uh, Kenya, uh, Tanzania, mm -hmm. certainly, mm -hmm. um, Ethiopia, mm -hmm. um, and also uh, because of the reference, Ethiopia. Uh, uh, biblical reference uh, I would find that in yeah. absolutely intriguing mm -hmm. um, but I'll tell you I, I, I really hate to even mention countries because uh, Nigeria you can really go on and on yeah. um, uh, I, I don't think there's a part of Africa that I wouldn't want to go mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know. well there's so much a stigma with the African continent being you know still the dark continent or maybe people are fearful of going into these countries but now that you've researched these countries and you've um, kind of learned about their histories does that how does that inf infect your uh, your wanting to go there well for one thing um, my paintings are to eliminate the idea of a dark continent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I'm saying dark continent in a negative sense which is generally it's it's bad yeah. I mean it's not simply a country we don't know anything about the mm -hmm. land of the unknown and there's I'm sure there's unexplored uh, export territory mm -hmm. in Africa but usually it would be in the negative sense and again especially related to what I'm doing in my art getting back to empathy again yeah. how do you identify with a dark continent mm -hmm. You need light, mm -hmm. not darkness. The darkness doesn't reveal anything. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to reveal mm -hmm. the beauty in the culture of the people of Africa. Okay, not draw the, the blinds down. Uh -huh. um, so in that, in that context, I believe uh, the more, you don't want to know something, I would say, give you an example. When did people finally bridge the gap between the African American and the Euro-American, mm -hmm. or the black person, and the white person. Mm -hmm. It was when people got together. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then all the stories, all the fables, all the jokes, all that stuff, um, the, um, uh, that was just all thrown out. 
because because you got to know the person mm -hmm. and well what better advertisement could you even have about going to visit a country and I would recommend um, everyone in this country and again it's not limited to the african-american yeah you know keep in mind unless science reveals something else yeah. and I haven't read it yet mm -hmm. um, and that is chances are mm -hmm. we began in Africa that's everybody <laughs> okay yeah so being black an African-American, mm -hmm. yeah, you could say you're a lot closer maybe mm -hmm. to that beginning that say, I am, mm -hmm. you went this way and I went that way and so on and so forth, but the point is, that is also in me. Mm -hmm. That gets back again to what I said earlier, yeah. sharing blood. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. You know, why are we able to share blood? Mm -hmm. So, um, but again, I don't want to get too deep with that. Yeah. I, I just, but but I would highly recommend mm -hmm. you uh, that everyone, mm -hmm. you know, take the time to visit yeah. an African mm -hmm. and talk to an African. Mm -hmm. And you know what? You're going to be surprised. You're going to be very surprised. You're going to, and in fact, you're probably even going to be a little ashamed and embarrassed. Mm -hmm. My gosh, I was thinking this way. I was so wrong. I can't believe it. Mm -hmm. I had a wonderful conversation with him, or a wonderful conversation with her. We had so much in common. Right. Right. But you got to be willing to do it. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Do it. Mm -hmm. It's fun. It's an adventure. And it's, you know, it's just going to open your eyes. Not only about the African. Mm -hmm. Not only about the African American. Mm -hmm. But even more importantly, it's going to open up the, your eyes about yourself. Mm -hmm. when, uh, I, Martin Luther King and Malcolm X were the, the two most influential mm -hmm. prominent people. Um, when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King brought the racism in this country into your living room. Mm -hmm. It was no longer, well that's the way it's done down there. That's, you know, you're gonna get it. No, 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 he brought it in your living room when we saw the fire hoses, the dogs, all the rest of it. So that, so there was no longer mm -hmm. turning the other way from it. Mm -hmm. It was right there to deal with it. Malcolm X, well, Malcolm X, he taught me to look at the racism, not in others, any of the racism I had within myself. Mm, interesting. And I've always been very thankful for that. Mm. So then, drawing the two together, uh, yeah, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. That's great. So can you tell us a little bit about your paintings now? Can you describe uh, them a little yeah, bit to us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, but, uh, are you okay with the angles, uh, with the lady here? Uh, is this too dark, or can you see her okay? Okay, well, uh, this, this lady um, is, uh, the title is referred to as Reflections. The theme, calling into remembrance her former days. She endured, and she's entered into rest. It's a beautiful painting. And I'm, you know, I'm not that far removed from her age, mm -hmm. so I can really identify with her in that context <laughs> because I've reflected mm -hmm. on myself in my early days and uh, looked at the highs, looked at the lows, but then, yeah, I end up being at rest and I'm so thankful for that. And that's what she's experiencing right now. Um, this lady, uh, the title is Beads, for obvious reasons. Uh, she's a Turkana woman. A Turkana woman's beads is a social indicator of honor and of respect. So in other words, these beads are, are not simply ornamentation. There's a purpose and you'll find that as you, as you research and I hope everyone that's listening to this is enticed to learn more about Africa and they'll find that a lot of the artifacts have a practical purpose, a cultural purpose. And you know what? You can identify that. Yeah. I can identify with that. Oh, come on. It's the United States for Mary. What, how do you identify with that? My son, Aaron, mm -hmm. he saw a picture of he, uh, kids in the 1950s, the era that I was raised mm -hmm. in. And he saw a lot of the boys that had cuffs rolled up in their Levi's. He assumed, understandably, mm -hmm. that that was the style. Yeah. That was the fad. That was the fashion of the 50s. Well, it was a style and all that, but there was a practical purpose. Uh, mom knew that you grew so she would buy Levi's mm -hmm. much longer 
Mm. than your legs, but roll them up and then let them out a little bit at a time as you grew. Oh, I and by the that. way, yeah. And by the way, they made Levi's back then. They could stand up on their own. They were so stiff. Oh, wow. Yeah, not like today. <laughs> also, moms were very practical. If you got a hole in, you know, in the knee playing, yeah. uh -huh. slap a patch on. Oh. There you go. And you move on. <laughs> but anyway, so that's a practical purpose. Yeah. This, is a, this has a reason. Honor, respect. Uh, this painting here, this is entitled Strength. The theme being, though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Strong and fearless, the zoo. And that's what that represents. The lady here, eh, we got a few drinks over here and some water. <laughs> water. I'm emphasizing that water. This painting is entitled Bold. A Maasai woman displays her honor and strength to endure. And if you look, uh, go into the Maasai woman and what she's about, uh, yeah, she's got a lot of endurance and it requires a lot of strength. And maybe for a lot of women, uh, reflecting on the Maasai woman and see what they go through, maybe... Uh, Gee, I thought I had pretty bad. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong; she's not miserable. Yeah. But that's why I say it. it uh, you know, she endures. You know, this is she's she is she has a pride within her. But again, is there a woman that doesn't identify with that? Mm -hmm. I would hope any woman looking at this can identify with her. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the best compliment I had in this painting mm -hmm. was a young lady looking at it, and she said, "Oh my gosh, that's me." Mm. There you go. That's what I like. Mm. And that is what defining empathy. Right. She found empathy in that word. There you go. So I hope old woman will say, that's me. <laughs> um, well, let's see. Um, if you got to swing it around here, if you can see. Okay. Any of this. Do you want to go ahead and move the camera? Closer. Which one are you targeting now? Oh, I was talking to him. No, oh, I meant in terms of uh, the one that's... Are you targeting this first? Because I, I, I kind of like to keep with the African theme right, right now, just keep it the continuity. Yeah, let's start okay. with that one. You're okay here now? Uh, yeah, right here. Okay. Um, this painting is entitled Courage. Symbolic of Courage. The Maasai warrior headdress announces his readiness to confront the king of beasts. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, the Maasai is a protector and a warrior. And the lion that he's pursuing is a test of his manhood. Well, haven't we all had tests? No, yeah, we're not hunting lions as a test. But nevertheless, is there a guy out there that can't identify with that? Think about it. And learn more about the Maasai, as I mentioned. Historically, the achievements of the Maasai and their culture. This painting is, ref I refer to as, Time to Go. The strong wind returns to Lake Turkana, and the dragons wait but you will not be left alone. And by the way, uh, Lake Turkana is, uh, is there, currently there's an active volcano and they have violent storms. And uh, again, empathy. What's the empathy in this painting? Well, um, again, I'm not that far removed from his age. And uh, I imagine there's a lot of elderly men that they maybe have gone to a park and uh, sought their grandson and know there's a storm coming up. Maybe it's time for supper, whatever the case may be, it's time to go. Mm -hmm. And the sense of protection the child has with her grandfather. Well, can you not see that? I hope in the painting. <laughs> oh, by the way, the expression of the boy, he doesn't look too thrilled about going. Uh, He's having fun. He's a little boy. He's climbing the rocks and having a ball. Well, we've all been there too. So that's the name of that painting. 
Time to go. The next one is um, referred to as reflections. Calling into remembrance her former days, she endured and entered into rest. Now I have the slightest idea what she's thinking, and I'm not going to tell you what she's thinking. If I, you know, if I invented something, I wouldn't do that. Because again, getting back to empathy, I want. In other words, it's the moment is what we're talking about. Is there anyone who is watching this, listening to it, that hasn't been in a moment of reflecting on something? Mm -hmm. Now she obviously, she's smiling. There's a joy within her. Mm -hmm. Is it about a young man? Mm -hmm. Is it about something she saw a child doing, playing? Is it about herself in, uh, when she was even younger? Or thinking about later in life, what she might be doing? The point is, she's in a space right now that I believe anyone can identify with. And that's man or woman. It's gender neutral in that sense, even though she's a woman. And so that's the name of that painting, Reflections. And uh, yeah, and I'll just bring us back one more time. And that is the uh, painting called Devotion, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and that's this is the way they uh, gather in uh, Botswana. Uh, but the point is, it's a mother's love, the bonding that she's having with her child. And uh, I mentioned the supermarket. Uh, in any circumstance, we've all been places, including yourself, any woman who just had a child or maybe is raising a child. Yeah, you've had a lot of those, haven't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And Dad, you too. <laughs> well, your paintings are absolutely beautiful. So how can one find your paintings, or if they want to purchase one of your paintings, how can they go about doing that? Well, currently, I'll have my art on display on a website uh, where you can make a purchase with a canvas print. Um, there's a, a paper. Uh, uh, acrylic prints, uh, it's almost any vehicle you can think of. Uh, I believe um, I also will have in place uh, being able to even have a case for your uh, uh, the cell phone uh, 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 viewing one of my paintings. Uh, the vehicles are endless, uh, uh, perhaps a coffee mug or something like that. Uh, but uh, Oh, and possibly I uh, also have them available in a Jacle print which is like a museum quality. Okay. But I'll have that all in place with specific cost breakdowns, et cetera, of various sizes. Uh, and again, that should be coming up very shortly. And then when it gets to that point, I will uh, make the uh, announcement. And uh, I'm also discussing with George the possibility of maybe even Africa Agenda being a vehicle mm -hmm. uh, to post when they are available oh, yeah. through other outlets. I wish I could say it right now, mm -hmm. um, but that will be coming. And so do you hope to continue your line of projects that are having an African theme? Oh, absolutely. That's not going to change. That's not going to change. And uh, the reason why um, it is so... Uh, the reason why it's that way is because, again, I'm, I'm pretty long in the tooth. And you know it's uh, it's a very common thing, uh, but a good thing that uh, people want to leave something behind. Took leave something behind more than what you took out. Mm -hmm. Anything that can benefit people overall. And of course, the older you get, the more meaning that has. Uh, and it's something um, that I believe I have a responsibility to do. I can't you know I, I can't explain why that is or any more than I can explain why I do artwork as you asked me earlier. Yeah. Uh, it's very difficult. It's was this there. Um, and my uh, impulse as far as uh, in the creativity with the African is uh, just incredibly important to me. By the way, let me interject this. I uh, spent uh, quite a few years um, working in the uh, inner cities as a community activist. This is when I was young and full of oats and I'm out to save the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, one of, the, one of the best moments I ever had, I was working on a mural at the time, on a wall, and it was uh, depicting the first image was an African woman. By the way, I'm going back like 45 years. Mm -hmm. I'm going back a long time. But anyway, it was an African woman. 
uh, looking right at you. And then just behind her was a ship sailing across the ocean. And then just on the opposite side of that was a uh, black man in chains in obvious anguish. The, this, this is the beautiful thing. Uh, a little boy, I guess he's about maybe seven, eight years old, there's a uh, local elementary school, mm -hmm. stopped in. And he walked up to me because he saw me painting. Mm -hmm. And he said, who's, why does he look like that? That's the person in anguish. And I said, well, you see that, see the woman on the other side? And he said, yeah, well, that's an African woman. And uh, that's his mother. That's his mother? I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you see that ship right there? Yeah. Well, that ship is taking her son away from her and putting him somewhere. He didn't ask to be. He doesn't want to be. And he loves his mother deeply. And that's why he looks like that. Wouldn't you feel that way? Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah. But this is the topper. This is when, when I feel like I'm succeeding in something. He came in the next day and brought in some of his friends. And he told the story. He told, he said, well, well, you see that woman there? That is his mother. And he just broke it all down. Mm. But he did it. Yeah. I wasn't involved in it at all. Yeah. And that's what I hope I can contribute. Well, I think that was a great way to end the story. And I think it's a great way of showing how artwork is such a powerful medium for storytelling and getting a message across and for continuing it for future generations. So mm -hmm. thank you, Dennis, for oh, this Dennis. interview. Yes, and, and we you. look forward to seeing more of your work. Thank you so much. Thank it's you. It's a real pleasure. Mm -hmm.